Hi, this is Brad Constantine, and this is a podcast recording of the Old Testament. Although this is not an official recording of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, every effort's been made to be as doctrinally accurate as possible. I'll be using for the text the Joseph Smith translation of the Old Testament, along with many commentaries from general authorities of the Church, BYU professors, Bible scholars, and others. This format will be very detailed, and so if you want a deep analysis of the Old Testament, you come to the right place. Thanks for your attendance. Hi, and welcome back to the Old Testament podcast. Today's episode is going to be 1 Samuel chapter 8. And it came to pass when Samuel was old that he had meant that he made his sons judges over Israel. Now the name of his firstborn was Joel, and the name of his second, Abiah, and they were judges in Beersheba. Theocracy is government by the immediate direction of God through his ministers and representatives. A state governed in this manner is called theocracy. This was the original earthly government, Adam serving as the great presiding high priest through whom the laws of the Lord, both temporal and spiritual, were revealed and administered. This type of government apparently confirmed among the righteous portion of mankind from the days of Adam to Enoch and the taking of Zion to the Lord's bosom. The great patriarchs after the flood, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and others, appear to have had this type of government. Righteous portions of the Jaredite peoples were undoubtedly governed on this system. Certainly, ancient Israel in the days of Moses and the judges operated on a theocratic basis, and the same system prevailed among the Nephite portion of Lehi's descendants during most of their long journey or long history. When Christ comes to reign personally on earth during the millennial era, a perfect theocratic government will prevail. That was by Bruce R. McConkie. This type of government was ideal during the reign of the judges. However, the wickedness of the people in general, and of certain leaders in particular, largely invalidated the theocratic form of government. And that was out of the Institute Manual. And his sons walked not in his ways, but turned aside after lucre, and took bribes, and perverted judgment. Then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together, and came to Samuel and to Ramah, and said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways, nor now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people in all that they say unto thee, for they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. Samuel's sons set a poor example to the people. They turned aside from the religious truths they had learned in their youth. They used their judge, judgeships to seek monetary gain, betraying their sacred trusts by taking bribes and giving perverted judgments. But even more than this, the Israelites as a people had become weak and sinful and were envious of surrounding kingdoms. Even though their governments were wicked and, and oppressive, so they used Samuel's sons as an excuse to justify their desire to be governed by the same system as the Gentile nations. The people of Israel traced the cause of the oppression and distress from which they had suffered more and more in the time of the judges to the defects, to the de defects of their own political constitution. They wished to have a king like all the heathen nations, to conduct their wars and conquer their enemies. Now, although the desire to be ruled by a king, which had existed in the nation even from the time of Gideon, was not in itself at variance with the appointment of Israel as a kingdom of God, yet the motive which led the people to desire it was both wrong and hostile to God, since the source of all the evils and misfortunes from which Israel suffered was to be found in the apostasy of the nation from its God and its coquetting with the gods of the heathen. Consequently, their self-willed obstinacy in demanding a king, notwithstanding the warnings of Samuel, was an actual rejection of the sovereignty of Jehovah, since he had always manifested himself to his people as their king by delivering them out of the power of their foes as soon as they returned to him with simple penitence of heart. That was by Keel. The Lord himself said to Samuel, They have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that, I'm, that I shall not reign over them. Verse 8, According to all the works which they have done since the day that I brought them up out of Egypt, even unto this day, wherewith they have forsaken me and served other gods, so do they also unto thee. Now therefore hearken unto their voice, howbeit yet, pro yet protest solemnly unto them, and show them the manner of the king that shall reign over them. And Samuel told all the words of the Lord unto the people that asked of him a king. And he said, This, was, this will be the manner of the king that shall reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them for, for himself, for his chariots, and to be his horsemen, and some shall run before his chariots. 
and he will appoint him captains over thousands and captains over fifties, and will set them to ear his ground or cultivate and to reap his harvest and to make his instruments of war and instruments of his chariots. And he will take your daughters to be confectionaries or perfumers, anointment makers, and to be cooks and to be bakers. And he will take your fields and your vineyards and your olive yards, even the best of them, and give them to his servants. And he will take the tenth of your seed and of your vineyards and give to his officers and to his servants. And he will take your men servants and your maid servants and your goodliest young men and your asses and put them to his work. He will take the tenth of your sheep and he will, and he shall be and ye shall be his servants, and ye shall cry out in that day because of your king, which he which ye shall have chosen you, and the Lord will not hear you in that day. Nevertheless the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel, and they said, Nay, but we will have a king over us, that we may also be like all the nations, and that our king may judge us and go out before us and fight our battles. And Samuel heard all the words of the people, and he, and he rehearsed them in the ears of the Lord. And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto their voice, and take them a king. And Samuel said unto the men of Israel, Go ye every man unto his city. Samuel warned the Israelites of three principal evils in a kingly form of government, excessive taxation, conscription of the labor force, and seizure of private lands. President Kimball said, Samuel called the people together and explained to them that the people of the Lord should be different with higher standards. We want to be like other peoples, they demanded. We, want to, we do not want to be different. Not so different are we today. We want the glamour and frothiness of the world, not always realizing the penalties of our folly. Others indulge in their social drinking. We must also have a king like unto other nations. Styles are created by the vulgar and money mad and run, run from one extreme to the other to outdate present wardrobes and create business for merchants. We cannot be different. We would, ne we would rather die than be up to date than to be not up to date. If the dress is knee length, we must go a little above the knee. If shorts are short, we must have the shortest. If bathing suits are skimpy, we must have the skimpiest. We must have a king like unto other nations. The Lord says he will have a peculiar people, but we do not wish to be peculiar. If intimate fondling is the pattern of the crowd, we will fondle. We must have a king like unto other nations. Others have Hollywood marriages with finery and glitter and ostentatious pomp, pomp, pomposity. We also must have candles, gowns, best men and ladies in waiting, often dangerously near immodestly dressed. We must have a king like unto other nations. The world ha has a queen in every industry, business, factory, school, and social group. She must dress, immo dress immodestly, display her figure and appear in public places to further the financial interests of business, entertainment, and social groups. Ours also must have a beautiful face, a little talent, and a, a well-formed body with public for public exhibition. We can do little else, for we must have a queen like unto other nations. When, oh, when will our Latter-day Saints stand firm on their own feet, establish their own standards, follow proper patterns, and live their own glorious l lives in accordance with gospel-inspired patterns? Certainly, good times and happy lives and clean fun are not dependent upon glamorous, the pompous, the extremes. So that's the end of the chapter, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.